Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Jonah speaking, and you know guys, today a little trip to the frozen land after the climatic disaster. What do you think? DI Divided at Emperor is a strategic, competitive, economic game that I will remind you about in a moment. And in this video I will also show you one of the expansion, White Death. And you know, if it interests you, I will leave a link to the new expansions campaign in the description below. Uh, and uh, it's worth to know that uh, as a part of this campaign, the publisher will also do a reprint to the base game. And now, before I start, I want to ask you to like my video, provided you like it, of course. In DEI, each player will control one of four bands of uh, scrappers, survivors on the arrival on a new ice age on Earth. The scrappers are represented by miniatures and a leader. Each of leaders is characterized by different, unique, asymmetrical skills, which affect the style of play of a particle player. They are four different leaders in the base game. Aria leads the Shelter 42 faction, which release in device uh, from the past. Abrakan is the leader of Reverse, a faction that works with the rebels. Z13 comes for the farm, which is laboratory for genetic experiments. Nina is a race uh, that works closely with a pure caste. So in this board game, players will compete against each other for the richest loot, I mean technology, tokens and energy cells, which are placed on the map. In order for the scrappers to explore the map and collect resources, players play cards from the deck onto the board and activate various combinations of actions. Exploring the terrain of London, hidden under the thick layer of snow and ice, survivors will collect resources on two levels, from the ground level and by roofs of buildings. In addition to resources, it is also important to control outposts, which will allow them to unlock special ability tokens that will provide a variety of bonuses. With the resources collected from the map, players can trade with pure casta. By spending the resources specified on the card, they will also buy new cards from the markets and enrich their deck, allow them to play more interesting combinations of actions. In a base game, cards will be bought from four different markets. The red market will provide tactics cards. The blue one will buy logistics cards. There is also a green market, which machinery cards, and a white one, in this case, uh, a black market. So each player starts the game with four cards, one leader, miniature and some of his scrappers. During the course of the game, after upgrading his deck, he will be able to build a new structure, such as bridges or elevators, which will allow him to score the rooftops of skyscrapers, I mean climb to higher levels. In addition, he can also gain temporary control of high-tech drones from the pure caster. Drone cards are shuffled into three decks of action cards in the markets at the beginning of the game, so the players can be purchased. Drones are assigned to specific factions, but during the game other players will be used to drones of competing factions after playing the appropriate cards. As you can see, the game map is three-dimensional and because it is modular too, each game will be different. So scrappers will compete for territories, for resources and for more influence in markets, so some kind of combat, in this case a majority on the territories, will be count. Ok, now I will show you the White Death expansion with three new factions, weather cards and three new machines. So machines. Snipers on rooftops can use the hull to eliminate rival scrappers. In the Grand Region and on the Roof Regions, uh, you can use a slug to make tunnels in the snow, and a Ripley will be help in collecting resources. Along with the machines, there will be a new market with cards assigned to the machines. So now about new factions. One of the new factions is a Wild. They choose to live in communication with nature. That's why their scrappers are wolves. They are a race that blames technology for the, you know, climate catastrophe. 
The special unit is the Tolstoy. It has its own deck of cards with various abilities. It helps to move around the map, control strategic areas and collect resources. It cooperates with the basic units, in this case wolves, to collect pressure, resources and take control of areas. Next faction, Founds, are another new race that appears in the game in this expansion. They are mythological creatures that have not been seen on Earth before. However, when things go, you know, frosty, they were forced to reveal themselves. They differ from other factions in their ability to destroy outposts and replace them with their den. Cubes for the outpost activate the bonus actions on the player board. In addition, their mission cards are introduced into the gameplay. Above that, you will use this race for solo mode using dedicated cards for it. Now time to next new race. It's humans with the ability to control minds. They are a faction called the Rebels. Psionics are a group of five asymmetrical leaders. They don't have their scrappers, but each of the leaders has their own unique abilities like telekinesis, teleportation, mind control, phantom soldiers and several others. This skill set allows this race to, you know, survive in this hard and frosty world. I mentioned about hard climatic conditions. Next new thing in this expansion is weather cards. Playing with them, you will discover a new weather card after revealing mission cards. They work for all players and introduce various difficulties like ice and then players can't build bridges and elevators. So it will be hard. If these new things isn't enough for you, there are two more mercenaries you can hire. Of course, each with a different special ability. For example, Yukas is a hacker. While Alexandra collects all the resources from the region he is in. So she makes good use for her extra hands. Thank you guys for watching this video. You can find the details in the description below. And see you next time.